So like like we were talking about, uh, and I, I I think this is kind of important to to bring up. You know, people who repeat and regurgitate transphobic and homophobic things. I don't necessarily think the vast majority of them want harm to come to them, but they don't care. That, like, they really just legitimately don't care if harm does come to them. You know, they can, they might feign some sort of like, you know, oh, you know, that's terrible. But at the same time, the point of this rhetoric that's being pushed, like, not just by the fringes, but by mainstream mainstream stuff like we were watching videos about that earlier today uh where you had uh this uh th this this patriot barbie going on tucker carlson stating the full name of a teacher who is trans mocking them for their dead wife you know does that person want that person dead not necessarily and they'll put enough plausible deniability that if somebody were to murder that person, they'd be like, oh, that's terrible. But internally, I don't think that they care, and they would maybe even silently be cheering it on. That person is specific. People who passively watch it and are just grossed out by icky things like, ooh, the gays, ooh, trans people, uh, that type of thing, I think that they do possess a certain amount of empathy. But what they don't understand is that when you embrace that kind of shit and you regurgitate that kind of shit, you're engaging in something that is actually very, very dangerous. And I don't just want to say that and have it like kind of passed off as like, well, maybe you're just kind of overinflating things because we, we understand what happens when you dehumanize people. We can see it in large scale historically through various different acts of overt oppression and genocide, but it also happens in smaller scales, too. When you have things like cults, for instance, cults uh, almost always want to dehumanize uh, the other, and it helps to rally them together. You know, it's a glue. It's a social glue. And it's very easy for people to not notice and to just go along with it. I saw this interesting TikTok yesterday. And it was this uh, this English guy, this white guy, and he said that he was racist, and he wanted to explain uh, that he intellectually knew that uh, you know everybody has every right to to dignity and exist and whatnot, but he was going by a school and he saw uh, some black men picking up their kids, and his brain said wow, some black fathers stick around, huh? And then he stopped for a minute and he was like, what the fuck was I just thinking? What the fuck? And he knew intellectually, like, of course, black fathers stick around, absolutely. But the problem wasn't even necessarily him because intellectually he knows better. It was the surrounding environment that passively influences and affects him. So much so that this pervasive thought that he doesn't want and they do, he doesn't want it to be a part of who he is popped up and there's a reason for that it's crafted a lot of times in uh especially these days far right and actually mainstream right uh rhetoric is to create a society full of poison to poison you against people that you might think are different or feel are different you know and it creates these biases. I myself had a really shitty, shitty perspective. And uh, it was many years ago, unfortunately not that many years ago, but there was uh, a term that was used, trans trenders. And uh, I, I used that term. I used that term and used it to describe uh, some of the content creators. And in my defense, uh, I was taught this by a friend of mine who was trans, who is a very big content creator now, and she and I are not friends anymore, and we very much disagree. Um, but it was this environment that I was like being almost unknowingly exposed to, which made me develop certain biases that I no longer hold. And it took actual effort 
actual intellectual effort for me to clear those biases away, to look at it in a different way. And that's really the thing that, that you know, everybody has to be aware of is our environment, our society is filled with these poisons. And there are people that want to inspire that poison to the point where you don't even realize it's fucking happening. You just wake up one day and you said some shit that you're like, when the fuck did I start thinking that? When the fuck did I start using that those words, that language? What the fuck? That's not me. Where did that come from? And I think a lot of people that don't have a moment because they're just too busy. You know, you got work, you got your family, you got all this shit that you got to do. Your average, average ordinary person, you don't necessarily have the time to stop and like examine your biases. You don't have the, the chance to. So it's one of the reasons why I, I like to make videos going up against uh, shitheads. Because you can look at it as, as like there's a ladder, okay? It's a ladder of escalation. There was somebody who, gave, who made a comment that they, they didn't like that I had hate on my second channel, that I am, I'm hating on right wing, on, on conservatives and people who are on the right. And that's not accurate. That's not accurate at all. I tend to have a lot of compassion for uh, people who are on the right and conservatives. What I don't is people who push some of these ideas. For example, I made a video uh, about the, the mom dressed as a cat, uh, you know, to, to try and fight against the woke mob in schools and shit. But that woman is on Tucker fucking Carlson. She right now wields a massive amount of potential influence out in the world. And me being mean to that person is, in fact, speaking truth to power. That person chose to out a trans person and mock them to millions of people about their dead wife. The person they're talking about has no power in this situation. So the, this, the, you can't compare those two things. And it is a battle to basically try and convince people to examine their biases, to, to really look at what we're consuming. Do you want to be influenced into cruelty until cruelty itself is something that you're doing without thinking? Or do you want to have a moment to step back and examine like where exactly you want to be living your life, you know, and, and, and the things that you're going to be like feeling and the way that you're going to address people? Because it's not just what you say. And that's the biggest, most important part of this shit. It's not what you say. That is a big thing, but at the root of it is how you feel and what you think about these situations. Because if you don't examine those things, it's very easy for the passive poison of our society to get in and turn you from a good person into a shithead. So, like, it, I think it's a lot more important than people uh, give it credit. So, that's... uh. <laughs> That's that's my that's my rant on that.